Welcome back to our FNA, and today I'm going to talk about a very simple yet heavily underused trick to speed up your workflow, and that is taking notes. Take notes? But I do take notes. I know you might, but maybe not in that specific way. And that's what I'm going to talk about. And before I do, welcome to the channel. My name is JD. And if you're here for the first time, I do lectures like these. I do acting analysis clips. I do animation analysis clips. I do rig reviews, product reviews, animation news, all kinds of things. Feel free to browse around. And if that is something that you like, feel free to also subscribe so you don't miss any of my uploads. All right. So there are many ways to increase your workflow in terms of speed. You can do what I talked about before, where you break up your play blast into beats and chunks and kind and attack certain sections. But there's one simple thing that you can do that will absolutely speed up your workflow and it will keep you on track and it's very organized, but I don't see many students do it. And it's super simple, it's super fast. So hopefully it's going to be simple enough for you to incorporate and you're going to see your schedule shrink because it's going to be so much better for you. Speaking of better, I'm going to show this on my Wacom One because this is a sponsor post. Thank you very much Wacom for providing me with that tablet. So let's go and switch cameras to show you this. So let's switch over to this. Actually, let's make this full screen. And you're wondering, okay, so what is this trick? What could be so simple. Well, the simple thing is this, and I would highly recommend that you use Keyframe Pro for this. Link in the description if you want to check it out. So I have my shot here, right? Uh, this is broken up into two different shots. So what people usually do, they show the shot to whatever mentor or teacher, and then they write down those notes, and then that's it. And then they start working on their shot. And that's kind of where the note taking ends a lot of times. And I say a lot of times mostly because I ask students and I kind of look at their workflow and I can also see how the updates are. And as my new semesters will start next week, actually, this will be something that I will recommend right off the bat. So the specific thing that you want to do is that once you're done with the notes, you're going to start implementing these into your shot. So when you do a play blast, here's the problem. A lot of times you animate, you do a play blast, you go, mm, okay, all right, well, let me do this. And then you start noodling on things and you might change some animation here and there. You do another play blast. Yeah, I guess. And you might do a play blast of everything. You might do a play blast of this little section. And that just, if you go like this over and over and over, you're wasting a lot of time. So here's the trick. So let's say I I am not happy with this entrance because the way this enters here, I don't like that there is the belly here first and this seems like it's going to intersect through there. I want it to be straight away. It's basically just the beak maybe and then the bigger side of the head and maybe the head comes in here and then that and so on and so on. This is something that I do on every shot. I look at this and I say, all right, head entrance, right? In my super writing that only I can understand. And then you can take any type of notes. You want to look at smoothing the geometry just for later polish. Then you look at later spots where if you go forward, maybe this, you want to move a bit more over so that the beak is in a better silhouette. So it's not straightforward. So you want to turn this around and say, turn head again in the writing that only I understand. You move forward and on that hit, let's go back. That doesn't quite feel like there is a contact because of that shadow here. So contact, maybe here a better deformation again, geometry fix. When he does this, this feels very harsh as the body goes down, bam, on this frame, too hard. So here, hard, stop. You can also do something with different colors. Now I'm just inventing notes here. I'm changing colors. Let's do this. You can do straight versus curved. I'm really just pretending with notes right here. But that is the trick. You go and you look at your animation and let's say you're always disciplined with five notes or seven or 10, depending on how fast you are. But let's say five, just concentrate on something you can manage. Look at your clip, write down on each frame that has a problem. I need to fix this. Make a list of maybe five to 10 notes. I'd keep it small at the beginning. And then as you go back into Maya, you look at your clip, you go through this frame. Let me fix exactly this. This frame, let me fix exactly this. You're done with those five. Play Blast, look at it again. Oh, okay, take more notes. You have to start attacking your shots and your revisions in a structured way where you know exactly what to do. So you don't start noodling things where I wanna work on that pinky a little bit. Uh, I don't know, maybe that background thing, I don't know. You do this and you do this over days and days and days, you're gonna extend the schedule of your shot, you're gonna waste so much time. I know this seems like, wait, what, what? Super simple. It is, yet probably because it is so simple, it is absolutely underused. And the moment I started doing this at work, I got so much faster because I look at beats, I look at chunks, and within that, I take those notes. And it's a checklist that I go through, and when I'm done, I move on. Then you go to the next section, take notes, and you move on. And every now and then, you look at the whole thing to see, is the flow still there? Did I compromise anything in terms of overall timing or the flow or just the feeling of it? And that could be a bigger note. You look at the whole thing, so all right, well, I think I fixed this. This seems okay. All right, now it's that settled and he's about to get up and fly. Mm, okay, there's something that I missed here again. 
then that's your second chunk. You know that from here to here, whatever in your timeline, I'm gonna start taking notes. So you wanna look at potentially better silhouettes. Maybe you wanna change that so they're a bit more separated here. You go forward again. Let's say here, this is too thin. I want some wings that are a bit here. This potentially having more of a curve as it goes up so it's not so straight. Let's go back here. I mean, I can take random frames here. No, let's fix something. This line seems really busy. I wanna change that. As it goes here, this, I don't understand what's going on here. So really work on silhouette on something like that. So in Keyframe Pro, you also have your bookmarks. So when you're done with your notes, I can toggle and go quickly through all those sections where I need it and make notes. So you can flip through all those areas that you need. And once you're done, delete all the bookmarks, go to the next shot and do the same thing. All right, now you're identifying the chunks, right? I'm gonna do from here to here. That is the section where it flies down. I wanna look at this. That is the first interaction with the car. Going back, that might be another section. Once the character is done here, is the forward walk into a close-up, and then I'm gonna start taking notes, blah, 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 blah. I'm just pretending here, notes, blah, 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 pretending note here, and I can again flip through all of this using Keyframe Pro. So I think the combination of Keyframe Pro actually with a drawing tablet like this is really powerful. I'm not saying this because this is sponsored, I know this is conveniently sponsored, but if I go with a mouse, writing things down with a mouse, it's a pain and I can't, I can already barely read my handwriting. It's gonna be worse with the mouse. Now with the tablet on screen, much better. With a tablet directly on the screen, to me it's even faster. So ever since I got the Wacom One and in the future with the Cintiq that I will review, it's just gonna be so much faster. Well, I can really draw directly and it's gonna be much more precise. I can write really fast on it, put that in the corner, flip through the notes and then go back in there and take notes and attack the shot in a much more precise and structured manner, which will really save me time. So if you're not doing this already, try it. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe you're like, eh, I don't need this and it's gonna actually slow me down maybe but for me it has really worked i get the notes from my lead from my soup or from the client whatever it is or if i do something at home i look at the shot take the notes and make sure that i just attack exactly that because the notes that i'm gonna write down those are the things that really stand out those are not going to be all the nudely polished notes not yet that can be your second pass in a different color these are the shot breaking notes red i want to do this this would be really good orange if i have time polishy notes green you know what i mean you can really structure this in many many layers that i guarantee will save you time Speaking of saving time, if you want to work with me to save time on making your shop better, after works, I have workshops, so you know the drill. You can look at the description. I have all the links. Workshops are open and you can sign up at any time. Speaking of time, you know that if you're watching this whole clip till the very end, you know that I'm very thankful for your patience for going through the whole thing. And other than that, that's it for me. If you like this, you don't want to miss any of those types of uploads, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button. So you're up to date on all my uploads, which I do every day except weekends. And that is it with my usual end of clip spiel and pitch. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next clip.